Uh, I'm Diana. I'm the head of research and sustainability at the Global Blockchain Business Council. And I am delighted to be joined by two brilliant panelists. Um, I'll let you introduce yourselves. I am James Glasscock. I'm at Reserve Protocol. I'm the head of ecosystem. Brady Forrest, uh, head of BD at MobileCoin. Reserve does a couple of different things. You've probably noticed a, um, the Reserve app in Latin America. It's got quite a bit of traction uh, using an asset-backed currency and this permissionless protocol. And one of the things I'm, I'm super excited to be here with Brady today is to talk about the electronic dollar uh, that's gonna be launching on the mobile coin blockchain. Um, but why asset-backed currencies? Why does it matter? Well, there's a, we have a big money printing problem all around the world. Um, there's about five countries with inflation over 100% and 20 countries with inflation over 20%. Uh, and for those who might live in some of these countries, you know, I live in the United States and, and people are freaking out at five or six percent. <laughs> um, so it really, um, it makes uh, sustainability for how people live in their ecosystems very difficult, um, you know, because their currency may be devalued by 10 or 20 or 30 uh, percent a few days later. One of the really cool things about asset-backed currencies, though, is all of this is done on-chain with proof of reserves. And we think over the long term, the opportunity is uh, you could have a, uh, a currency backed by a basket of diverse assets and possibly kind of outside of the fumbling of different political agendas. Uh, and big tech companies. Uh, I, I apologize, I cheated a little. We made a quick video, it's two minutes. So uh, we're gonna roll that video and then I'll just kind of finish up. I just wanna settle for once and for all the point that inflation is a monetary phenomenon. They ran out of money and they needed more. So they printed more, a lot more. The prices go up for almost everybody in almost every country. This happens every year, every decade, every century. The prices just keep going up. But what if that's not how money works? What if your purchasing power could stay the same through time? Hi, you're meeting the Reserve Project. We want a world of asset-backed currency. We want a world where your wealth is stored across a diverse range of tokenized assets. An asset-backed currency built on the Reserve Protocol is called an R token and it runs on smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. Every R token that gets minted is backed by the appropriate basket of assets. RPay is an app for Android and iOS. Today, all balances in RPay are in US dollars, since the only stable coin you can hold with it right now is RSV, and RSV is pegged to the US dollar. Can you actually create a currency that doesn't inflate, that doesn't have this problem of price inflation? We think that the answer is maybe yes. What's the role of Mobi playing and what's the role of Reserve and, and what um, synergies and opportunities do you see in collaborating and working together? We want to be compliance first. And so it made sense to partner and be the first R token on their platform. When you think about being able to send money for less than a penny, like what are the applications for that, right? And so some of the conversations we've been having are around remittances and thinking about things like maybe refugee camps, but then there's also this developing phenomena around uh, being able to send money within video game environments and metaverses. Um, and the people that are sin or in like uh, social media tipping types of scenarios. And so that's where um, you really want to be able to do it privately and uh, at a very low cost. Uh, if someone's only sending 10 or 20 cents, uh, the fees have to be less than a penny. And so that's what really I think makes uh, the electronic dollar with Moby super interesting. For them. As we move further into what really is the electronic dollar, uh, you're backing it by a basket of, of other um, assets and, and how do you access it on a day-to-day -day basis with through either the Reserve app or the Mobi app? So MobileCoin is a layer one blockchain. We, the company was formed in 2017 and was designed to create fast, secure, encrypted mobile payments. 
and initially we released Mode, a volatile currency, but that doesn't really work for payments. It doesn't really work if I send you $5 on Friday and you have $8 or $2 on Monday. And so we wanted to have a stable coin because that is what people, that is how people want to transfer money. And so it was obvious that Reserve Protocol was a great partner for that. And so together we've released EUSD, electronic dollars. And when we're looking at how do we send money around the world, we look at something that's trusted. So we're in Signal Messenger, one of the most trusted apps on your phone and convenient. It's on your device. You're interacting directly with the blockchain. It's actually even better than that. It's uh, the fees are a quarter of a penny. There it's literally yeah. the least expensive stable coin on earth. Uh, you could utilize any one of the stable coins out there on any of the uh, least expensive networks that you're aware of, whether you look at Avalanche or Polygon or something like that, you're still gonna spend 10 to 20 cents fees for every uh, transaction you send. So when you can get it down to like below a penny, um, it seems pretty powerful. Uh, and, you know, some of the things that Brady and I have been talking about is like there are refugee camps, you know, uh, all around the world that are having trouble getting money to uh, to the people that live in those camps, the people that are working there. Um, and, 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 you know, when you talk about something like a refugee camp, it sounds like a temporary existence. But a friend of mine, you know, the folks at Alight, they were sharing with me people that live in refugee camps, the average uh, time span that they do that is about 20 years. So it's not a it's not a temporary uh, activity. It's it's people's lives. So Moby is Mobile Coin's first party wallet. It's designed to be a global cash app, designed by the creator of Cash App, who was previously at Square. And with Moby, you can fund your wallet using Apple Pay or Google Pay. You can off ramp to an exchange, and you can send money to anyone with a phone number, anyone in your contacts, and anyone whose Moby username you have. But all of this is self-custodial. We don't know what you're doing, we're not tracking, and we allow you to safely recover all of your assets just with your phone number and a pin. So we're trying to make it, this to be crypto as easy as say like PayPal or Cash App. Yep, and the way, the way these asset-backed currencies work, the, the assets are typically yield-bearing assets. Right now, the yield-bearing assets that have the most liquidity are, are fiat stable coins like Binance USD, USDC, um, and so forth. Um, th there is a future, though, where you're going to start to see more assets come on chain, like real-world assets, um, whether it's you know treasuries or bonds or um, real estate or lending. Um, but when the electronic dollar launches, we're focused on kind of the most trustworthy fiat stable coins. They're yield bearing. And um, what's exciting is this yield on, on, on this dollar can be used for a number of different purposes. In the case of the electronic dollar implementation with Moby, uh, it's all going to kind of an over collateralization fund. Um, so we're already working with some of the safest stable coins out there in the collateral basket but it has this sort of bonus little rainy day fund in case any one of the collaterals uh, he pegs. And then, you know, one of the things that Reserve is also providing, um, the, the protocol is free. Anyone in this room could literally launch a stable coin tomorrow. Um, we're working with Moby on this electronic dollar, but we're also helping with a permission bridge, right? Because the EUSD is a, is a privacy dollar. Um, and so um, our Latin American businesses um, are regulated in every territory that we operate in. And so one of the key parts of the relationship with Moby is, is you know, how could we make it really safe uh, and regulatory friendly uh, to be able to bridge money on and off the mobile point watching. So we think that privacy is a fundamental right. And the, we follow the BSA, the Bank Secrecy Act. And the Bank Secrecy Act stipulates that peer-to-peer -peer transfers are private. And so we've developed our blockchain so that it's fully encrypted. And then any transaction, so if I send James money, that's private. If I'm interacting with a regulated entity, that's when you start to 
keep track of it, do know your customers, go up against anti-money laundering laws. This is an interesting balance because we also have the transparency of the blockchain, right, where all the transactions are recorded, but to whom do you want that to be available, right? You don't want, like, if when you, get a, when you buy a coffee, you don't want the person who, who sells you a coffee to also see all your previous purchases and, like, everything else you need. Or someone who knows yeah. where, where you are, what exactly. your motive is, yeah, exactly. yeah. where you just bought coffee. So no one can see the transactions on, on the mobile coin blockchain. Reserve originally started in, in Latin America because of you had some, right? yeah, yeah, that's right, uh, significant hyperinflation problems in places like Venezuela and Argentina. And, um, you know, it's interesting, you know, we've all kind of, for those who've been in crypto for a while, uh, everyone's looking for the real world use cases. Where is the real world traction? And they took a really interesting approach. The, the Reserve App business in Latin America is a centralized, basically, cash app business. Um, but, mo and most of the users don't actually know they're using crypto stable coins. You know, for them, they're just using dollars. And the team there really just focused on the user experience first and foremost. Um, that reserve dollar, by the way, uh, today is actually uh, more so centralized, but I think within the next many months, it'll probably be replaced by an R token. Um, so, um, we're excited about that, but I, I think probably one of the biggest learnings is how important the UX is and that the users don't really care whether it's crypto or not, they just want to solve a problem. And, um, you know, as y'all might have seen in the, kind of the, the invitation, um, the, depending on the send-receive corridor of sending re remittances, I think this being able to send money privately and so inexpensively is it's something really easy to take for granted like if you happen to live in North America but um, it, a lot of the products that we're building you know we just done uh, a discussion with Erwan here from back finance a, a few days ago there's uh, there's a lot of places around the world that don't have access to Merrill Lynch Wells Fargo and uh, and, and Venmo and PayPal. Obviously, we've all heard some of the exploitation stories. Um, so there's there's that, which is, do I want to uh, give my financial credentials and my assets over to these types of entities who seem to have a track record of some form of exploitation or, or negligence? Um, and then um, and then they're just getting access to trustworthy products. And so. I think one of the really exciting opportunities is being able to do all of this on chain with proof of reserves uh, in a trustless way so that you, um, you know, we don't, you know, have more FTXs and Celsius and things like that happening. Um, that's the future I see coming and that's one of the reasons why I'm excited for the electronic dollar working with Moby. Um, the idea of self-custodial um, really puts all the power in the, in the user's hands.